Students of the 18th century Indian history are certainly familiar with Braddock, Pontiac, Weiser, and Sir William Johnson. But in George Krogan, we have perhaps the most fascinating and influential of the great American frontiersmen on the early westward movement across the Alleghenies into the Ohio country. Coming to Pennsylvania in 1741 during the Irish potato famine, Krogan entered the Indian trade and soon became the colony's most prominent trader. No man led a more adventurous life in colonial America. His name soon became legendary on the western frontier and to advance his Indian business, Krogan promoted an Indian uprising against the French. But at the same time, he became a superlative peacemaker. And in the period of the French and Indian War, Krogan's ability to understand and influence the Indians was unsurpassed. George Krogan was an Irish-born fur trader in the Ohio country of North America who became a key early figure in the region born around 1718. Emigrating from Ireland to Pennsylvania in 1741, he had become an important trader by going to the villages of indigenous peoples, learning their languages and customs, and working on the frontier where previously most French had been trading. During and after King George's War of the 1740s, he helped negotiate new treaties and alliances for the British with Native Americans. In 1746, he was appointed to the Onondaga Council, the governing body of the Iroquois, and remained so until he was banished from the frontier in 1777 during the American Revolutionary War. Krogan was appointed in 1756 as Deputy Indian Agent with chief responsibilities for the Ohio region tribes. He assisted Sir William Johnson, British Superintendent of Indian Affairs for the Northern District, who was based in New York and had strong alliances with the Iroquois. Beginning in the 1740s and following this appointment, Krogan amassed hundreds of thousands of acres of land in today's western Pennsylvania and New York by official grants and from Native American purchases. Beginning in 1754, he was a rival of George Washington for influence in Ohio country and remained far more powerful there for more than 20 additional years. During the American Revolutionary War in 1777, he was falsely accused of treason. He was acquitted the following year, but Patriot authorities did not allow him back in the Ohio Territory. Ohio's recorded history begins with Krogan's actions in the mid-1740s as a fur trader, Iroquois sachem, and go-between for Pennsylvania, according to historian Alfred A. Cove. Western Pennsylvania became the focal point in August 1749 when Krogan purchased 200,000 acres from the Iroquois, exclusive of two square miles at the forks of the Ohio for British Fort. Krogan soon learned that his three deeds would be invalidated if part of Pennsylvania sabotaged that colony's effort to erect the fort and led the Ohio Confederation to permit Virginia's Ohio Company to build it and settle the region. Late in 1753, Virginia sent George Washington to the Ohio country, who would eventually end Krogan's influence there. Braddock's defeat in 1755 and French control of Ohio country, which they called the Illinois country, indicated the area of their greater settlement, found Krogan building forts on the Pennsylvania frontier. He manned the farthest frontier post in present-day New York 
as deputy Indian agent under Sir William Johnson, called the Mohawk Baron for his extensive land holdings and leadership with the Mohawk and other Iroquois. Krogan briefly lived until 1777 on a quarter of a million New York acres. He resigned as an Indian agent in 1771 to establish Vandalia, a 14th British colony to include parts of present-day West Virginia, southwestern Pennsylvania, and eastern Kentucky, but continued to serve as a borderland negotiator for Johnson, who died a British loyalist in 1774. While working to keep the Ohio Indians neutral, during the Revolutionary War, Krogan served as Pittsburgh's president judge for Virginia and chairman of its Committee of Safety, General Edward Hand. The local military commander banished Colonel Krogan from the frontier in 1777 on suspicion of treason. Despite his acquittal, on a November 1778 trial, Krogan was not allowed to return to the frontier. His death in 1782, shortly after the end of the Revolutionary War, received little if any notice. Although often quoted by historians, the story of Krogan's 30 years as the pivotal figure in Ohio country, history is only found in a handful of biographies. If you like this channel and you want to see more content just like this, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, get out there and explore the American frontier. Well, thanks, guys. Get three coffins ready. Thanks for watching this video, and once again, subscribe for more videos like this one.